Hello, everyone. In light of the fact that we've had to uh, cancel a couple of services, some due to COVID, some due to the weather, I uh, thought I'd uh, try to give you a little something instead of having uh, no Bible lessons uh, for this week. Um, what I'd like to do uh, just now is do a little running commentary on the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, that famous chapter about the subject matter of faith, and uh, we'll alight on a few of the passages within that chapter, but mostly we'll just uh, summarily um, glance over it and uh, make a few comments uh, where necessary to try to get across the points uh, we need to communicate uh, with this message. So, having said that, let us let us start. This is uh, verse number one, uh, coming from the New International Version of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word and help me to communicate to you something that he'll help you to hear and receive. Now, getting on with this, um, what we see from this text, it seems to me, is just this, is that faith is the basis uh, for dealing with God, because faith, I think this is what we can learn from this, this uh, particular um, text, this phrase, uh, because faith is the capacity to see and rely upon that which cannot be seen. Uh, now, everything that's part of creation, for the most part, uh, can be seen, and uh, we've been granted sensory organs uh, to be able to perceive those things. Uh, it might, might not be able to be seen with the eye, but it can be seen with the ear, so to speak, or seen with the nose, seen with the touch. Uh, we have sensory uh, capacities given to us by God that allow us to, to see the world. Now, there are, of course, some things that are beyond the scope of any of those organs. Uh, we can't see the quantum world, uh, things of that nature. We can't see an atom. Um, but nonetheless, for the most part, uh, this, is, this is a verity, it's just a truth, that the things that are part of creation can be seen with the things that we've been created with in order to see. Now, God is not one of those things. He doesn't fit into that category. He's not part of creation, so it makes sense that nothing that is part of creation would be able to see him or sense him. Uh, certainly, I think that is is the truth. Um, can't touch him, can't smell him, can't hear him with our ears, can't see him with our eyes. Uh, God is unseeable to the instrumentality of creation that is meant to be able to see creation. So God is unseen, and if we're going to see him, it's got to be through something that isn't part of this created order in the sense that it's not part of, of just the uh, tangible things that make up the creative order. So uh, to see created things, we have created eyes. To see spiritual things, we have faith. Faith is the thing that enables us to see that which cannot be seen, and above all things that fit that category, there's God. So faith is the means by which we perceive God, who cannot be seen by any other means. And so uh, it, this little uh, bit of truth sets the table for everything else that's said in the chapter. Uh, let's skip on down, if we could. Uh, to verse number six. Listen to what this says there. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, I, I think that the, uh, you know, I think that the, the burden of this particular verse is just this, is that we get nowhere with God but without faith. Um, if you, um, if you want to know God, if you want to relate to God, if you want to have some success uh, in that endeavor, if you want to have success in, in uh, anything that puts you into contact with God or builds uh, fellowship or relationship with God, it's not going to be done without faith. Faith is the thing that has to enter in 
to accomplish that. And hence, faith is the thing that pleases God. Uh, it would seem to me that, that uh, in understanding how we've been created and what we've been created to be, um, uh, jumping to the next logical step, it seems to me, would be to have a sense that if God's made us this relational way that we are, it's because he's relational and that there must be something there that can be bridged, something there that can be um, passed through, passed over, passed between. And uh, if so, the only thing that's going to be the means of such will be faith. And so uh, we get nowhere with God without faith. Uh, now, there are those who want to see before they believe, um, you know, show it to me and then I'll believe, that kind of a thing. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that if, if God were something uh, that was possible uh, to be seen, then we would need to be believed, but because God cannot be seen, He's not created. He's not made out of light waves. He's not made out of energy. He's not made out of mass. He's not made out of even things that we don't know what are, but we think they're air like dark energy and such matter like that. God is God is not part of the created order, and there's just there's absolutely no way that He can be known, uh, that He can be sought. Uh, that he can be that he can be interacted with apart from this thing we call faith, um, and so without faith it's impossible to please him, because we can interact with him without faith. Now, if we perceive that God exists by faith, then we can also uh, realize, as I just mentioned, that we should be able to connect to him. Um, we should be able to get some kind of response from him. Um, if if God has made us, if God has made this creation uh, with its capacities, with our capacities, then, then it follows that we should be able uh, to find some way to connect to and interact with him. And, and uh, to do that, we must have faith. It crosses the threshold of believing he's there. Once you cross the threshold that he exists, what follows? Well, Getting to know him, getting to understand him, getting to interact with him follows. And that whole relational structure uh, requires faith in order for it um, to be able to be entered into. Um, if that faith is in place, then we can proceed uh, into a vibrant, effective relationship with God. Um, and I, that is really what so much of the rest of the chapter is all about. The so-called Faith Hall of Fame deals with specific examples and illustration of how faith was instrumental in bringing people into an effective and successful interaction or relationship with God. Um, let's explore just a few of them. Uh, three I, I, I'd like to explore uh, a little further depth here. Uh, the first I want to look at is Noah. The Bible says that by faith, uh, Noah was warned by God uh, of an impending judgment. Um, now, Noah took God at his word, and he acted upon it. And in doing so, uh, you know, that particular combination of things, that his faith perceived that there was God, that's the threshold, the underlying thing, being warned by this God, Noah took him at his word. Uh, he listened to him, and he believed that what he said was true, and then he acted on it. So he believed that he existed. He had some kind of reward of an interaction with God, if you will, and he acted upon it, and the tangible result in, in the created order was that he saved himself and his entire family. Uh, he, he was able to uh, see something that his eyes could never see. And by having the faith that fits right in that gap, he was able to do things in a world where, you know, we can see. Um, secondarily, let's talk a little bit about 
Sarah and Abraham. They're dealt with both separately and together uh, in chapter 11. So let, let's uh, look a little bit uh, into to them. Now, faith by faith, Sarah and Abraham uh, acted just like Noah did in his own way. They acted upon um, the... Uh, the promises uh, concerning an unseeable future. Now, I haven't said that yet, but see, that's one thing that's unseeable too, isn't it? Uh, the future. I can't see that by anything tangible. Can't see that by anything that we've been created to sense things with. Well, I can't see the future by my eyes, my ears, my nose, whatever. Um, it's an unseeable thing, but faith can give us the basis for perception that actually deals with the future. And in the case of Sarah and Abraham, that's exactly what happened. Now, first, they believed that God existed. Secondarily, in, in their interaction with God, they received a promise about the future. Now, they were old, and we are told that uh, their bodies were as you know, good as dead, basically. Um, but uh, the, the reality is, is that uh, because they perceived God as faithful, uh, trusting him to bring about that unseeable future, the promised thing came to pass. Uh, the miracle that it took to bring it to pass came to pass. And there is the lesson in Sarah and Abraham is that they knew that God exists. They perceived him as faithful. And as a result, when they heard a promise, they took it as money in the bank and they acted upon it. And so we see it's, you know, this very similar and building pattern of what faith is all about. Faith is a thing that perceives that God exists, enables a relationship to get, you know, going over the threshold of believing that he exists. Faith is a thing that allows the building uh, after crossing that threshold of relationship, of understanding, of fellowship, uh, a place where we can have promises, a, a, a place where we can have commands or direction, a place where we can have vision, a place where God is able to communicate to us in, in a much more personal and direct way, and it all comes as a result of faith. Now, the last one I want to kind of expand upon a little bit is Moses. We're told that it was by faith that Moses left the momentary pleasures of sin and wealth in Egypt uh, for a better reward from an invisible God. Again, um, the better reward had to do with something that wasn't at hand, that was in the future. And of course, God, invisible. Um, how did Moses begin his journey of faith? Well, or begin his his journey, faith. Uh, faith was the thing that allowed Moses to have perception of God's existence and then uh, to sense that that there was a reward, that there was a better future from this unseen God um, for, uh, for Moses. Now, um, he was able to act on this, and uh, ultimately God rewarded Moses with with greater access to himself, greater interaction to himself or with himself than any other man since Adam. Um, no man before Moses, except for Adam, had the kind of interaction, at least it's not recorded for us, um, no, no person had the interaction that Moses did. Moses saw God, as it were, face to face. Um, and so, even though God is unseeable, he found a way to express himself to Moses that was very, very real, uh, very um, awe-striking, very impactful. Um, Moses had definitely what we would say was an effective and a successful uh, relationship with God through the faith that he had. And so we see in these three examples uh, this this pattern for the power of faith. It, it's the thing that allows us to perceive that God is, and perceiving that God is allows us to act upon that perception in seeking and opening ourselves to God and hearing from God, being directed by God, and then follows that up on action, with action in the tangible world, 
and ultimately that brings blessing in the tangible world and in the world to come. All of this through this wonderful uh, capacity that we that God has given us to each he's given a measure of faith and it's through this faith that we're able to to see God and to have a relationship with him can't do it any other way and for those who, who can't cross that first threshold who can't bring themselves to believe in the existence of God um, nothing can be offered to them with God They'll have a self-fulfilling prophecy in their life. In other words, then in their heart, they'll say there is no God because they have no belief. And because faith is the only thing that could resolve that issue, they'll never have it resolved. They'll always be in the gap, if you will, and in their own mind, uh, if, if they have any perception, they'll have a perception that they were right for denying God in the first place. Whereas if we can cross that threshold and let faith be our, our eyes, if you will, into the spiritual realm, then we know that God exists and things can be built thereafter. And so faith is so celebrated, it seems to me, in this, this chapter. And, you know, the Faith Hall of Fame goes on and on. There are so many people cited, so many circumstances cited. And all of it is that, that faith connects a person to God and ultimately it brings uh, some token from God in, in, in real life circumstances and events um, that wouldn't have otherwise happened. And, and of course, always the underlying thought is that that, that eternal state that we hope to, to achieve, all of that is always um, tapped into, held on to, um, taken to the self, all through through this same thing called faith. Faith is our means uh, of of addressing God, uh, or I should say, assessing God. Um, by faith, we see that He exists. By faith, we perceive that He is able to do whatever He wants or whatever He says that He will do. By faith, we understand that He is in authority. He's in charge. By faith, we esteem Him as trustworthy. We we have a sense of His character, and we find ourselves willing to, to trust him, willing to count on him and rely upon him. Um, by faith, we're able to to embrace and see and, and perceive that he has the character that he self reveals to us. And faith allows all of this to happen, and without faith, none of it will happen. Now, in saying all this about faith, maybe this little... I don't want to really say that it is a disclaimer, but maybe a little proviso, um, at least, about faith. It's just to understand this, is that there's nothing in faith itself that is, that is powerful as a cathartic. What I mean by that is that there's nothing about faith intrinsically in faith itself. You know, it's not the nature of this thing called faith itself, that it has cleansing or purifying power. It, it, it doesn't. Uh, it can't wash away sin. Um, it, it can't uh, cover sin. Um, but God has provided such an agent, God has provided such an agent in the blood of the Lamb for those who do have faith. So even though faith itself um, can't move the record of sin, if you will. It might move mountains, but can't remove the record of sin. Faith is, is not a cathartic. It doesn't have the power within itself to do those things, but God has provided for those who have faith and for those who can put their faith in what he has provided. Uh, God has provided uh, in the blood of the Lamb the agent that does wash away sin and does provide a covering. And so uh, we say we're saved by faith and that our sins are forgiven by faith. Well, it's not the faith that does the work. It's the blood of the Lamb that does the work. But we have to have faith in the blood of the Lamb doing that work, if I can put it that way. Uh, faith is the thing that grasps the, uh, the afterlife. It perceives that, that there is a more perfect existence that could be if we could just leave behind this this broken sin-filled world 
and if we could just get beyond our broken, sin-filled lives to enter into that world through Christ, um, things could be so much better. Faith perceives that. Faith, faith, if you will, maybe sets off a, a certain longing or hunger uh, for something that isn't marred by the brokenness and by the destructiveness of sin. And so uh, faith uh, looks to that unseen reward. It's in the future, number one, and then it's, in some respect, there's certainly this powerful spiritual aspect of it. Unseen things can't be seen with the eye. They can be seen by faith, and faith puts us in the position of being able to receive it when this age is over. So it's by faith that we look forward to that perfection to come, and in looking forward to it, uh, it motivates us to be in the position to receive it uh, when it comes. When we look at, at all of these various aspects, we see how utterly, uh, utterly necessary faith is. We see how utterly uh, lost we would be without it. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to see Him. It's impossible to know Him. It's impossible to interact with Him successfully and effectively. And so, faith is the thing that is so necessary uh, for, for having that successful, effective relationship with God. And I hope that this little glance into Hebrews chapter 11, uh, that we've spent this, these few moments doing together, uh, gets that across. Uh, faith, it's all about faith. We need faith. Not the only thing we need. But it's certainly a major thing we need. And maybe it's the threshold thing that we need. And I would like to say probably that's very true. It's the threshold thing that we need to move into fellowship with God and to go from there to a deep understanding, a loving relationship. Faith chooses God. Faith embraces Christ. Faith lives to receive the promise. And let me just leave our little talk at this. Are you living by such a faith right now?